my Camaro was literally under him and my friend went through the windshield. I think the scariest part of the whole thing was I crawled out of the car and my friend Sabrina, she's standing there and she keeps asking, where's Mariah? I'm right here. And she's like, no, where's Mariah? And she keeps asking me and she is screaming. And it's to that point when I realized like, I'm dead. That's the people I want to reach is the kids who think that they ain't got no way because that was me. I ended up yeah. in prison because that was me. I was the angry kid. I was the kid who got kicked out because mommy couldn't control me and there was no daddy to do so. That was me. I wasn't a bad kid, y'all. At 15, I had the biggest future set up. At 14, at 12, when I'm skipping grades, they're thinking I'm going to be one of the valedictorians. I'm a high school dropout. I have a GED. I have no college to my name. How did I go figure out how to build a business? I used my time in prison to learn. And I was reading books, literally. And it's like, the world right now is set up on, oh, it's not about money. Okay, do you wake up every day for work or do you wake up to go work out? Because if it's for work, then it is about money because you wake up for work. But if you wake up and you, you know, you journal, you work out, you cook yourself a healthy breakfast. All of those things go along with someone who is worried more about personal development. So if that's what you're worried about, awesome. That's what it should be about is personal development. But don't sit here and tell me it's not about money when the only reason you wake up every day is to go to work. Like that's we've right. got to get our minds right. Why are we spending more time building somebody else's dreams? And then the time we do have, we come home and what do we do? We sit and watch Netflix. We sit and watch somebody else play games or whatever like we've got to take that time and say hey in that four hours how can I become a better person today all right and if you do that for 365 days you're going to be 365 percent better that is a whole new person right there yeah three times over three yeah. three of yeah. them 0.65 <laughs> of a new one <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a big fan of math, but I love your math. It's uh, not that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what kind of resources did you have in prison? Uh, was it just a library? Uh, uh, did you have much computer access? What were your no, tools? No computer whatsoever. No. The only access I had was the library. So I'm a hustler by far. Okay. So y'all know I had to have me like my pen pals in prison that will send me money. So those pen pals, they'll send me my books I wanted too. Any business books I wanted, workout books I wanted. That's really all I ordered. Everybody in there is ordering the books that talk about like, or uh, Empire, but on a book. That's where everybody would read and, and stuff. And it's like, you already came here for that. You're already here for shooting people. Y'all don't want to read nothing else that might get you out of that? And I didn't have to buy them either because if I wanted to read them, I just read theirs. <laughs> I'm going to buy the books I need. <laughs> What's your number one book in there? Uh, it would be Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Changed my whole understanding on money. It it really is the one that literally gave me the understanding that like, I, people call it the matrix, you can call it whatever, but I do feel like we're in something to where the government has us thinking we need all these things so that we don't realize the other things. That's what I believe. You know, like they want us, yes, they want us to work so we pay for other people's houses other people's cars we don't own any of the stuff we own it in like 30 years but at the end of the day they're just taking all of our money so that we can't evolve so that we can't grow that that's why when i came home like i don't think jobs are bad i just think like long term if you have the opportunity and you're in a place where like maybe somebody's paying your bills because you just came home or something like that take that opportunity take any skill you know and post it on facebook i can do this for blah 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 money you get you a couple customers, get you a couple business cards, and you keep going. And before you realize it, you're making more than that five or six hundred bucks a week that you would have made somewhere else because they're going to go take half of it. The other way, they're not taking nothing. They're going to give you all the cash, and you're going to say, "Have a good day," you know. And yep. so, like that—that's where, like, for me, why would I? I have a friend right now. She uh, went to college, everything makes thirty dollars an hour, right? But when she divides it down, fifteen. After she mm -hmm. takes out her care and her taxes, it's 15. She just got a $3 raise. So she was at $25 an hour. And when she divided that, she was making 17. So she actually, for $3 more, just lost $2 because she, she bumped into a new tax bracket. 
Yeah, where we live, in order to get something started, they have so many blockades of of that that are preventing you from getting to where you, they they do not make it an easy process, and half the businesses fail just getting to that point. You know, I dove into YouTube automation, so when my company went down, I haven't I haven't got to this part. When my company went down, I was already online because I I wanted to try to make money online because my shop is hot. Although I'm making money and stuff, like, it's hot as hell. Nobody wants to work in the heat. It's outside 110. Inside our shop sitting 125. It's no AC. Like, who? you can't work in that. That's sauna weather. So I was like, you know what? I want to make money online. What can I do to make money online? So I came across, you know, affiliate marketing, obviously sell shit on Amazon. I don't, I didn't want to do any of that. I don't want customers. I don't want to deal with people more than what I want to say. Adios. And so YouTube automation is where I fell because in automation, you don't have to, you don't have to make the video or nothing. I own a couple of celebrity news channels. So every time some crazy news comes out, I just make a little video about it. And then the video, like right now, this, I don't know if y'all know her. She's Regina King. She's like an old artist. Y'all probably don't. But her son committed suicide a few weeks ago. And so that video on my channel right now has 800,000 views. Well, every thousand views is $4. And so I'm sitting at 3,600 bucks right now on that one video I paid 40 bucks for. Nice. You know, and it's nice. like, does every video do that? No. But as your followers are growing, they're all going to start doing that because your subscribers are, are fault. You know, like you're growing, it, it just conglomerates all, you know? And so I'm just like, while my channel, Fellowpreneur, is not growing as fast, it's okay because I have other channels where those people are already popular, celebrities, you know? The machine channels do awesome too. Like you can make a video about um, agricultural machines, like machines for farms. And those, those blow up on, t on uh, YouTube because there's so many people who need to sell the equipment, farming equipment. And two, they want to know about the new equipment. So you just make a video about some and then farmers run their ads on there and you get paid a lot of money. And it's like your company, your city, your state, your country can't tell you, no, it's YouTube. You went on to YouTube and you made your yourself an account and you looked up YouTube automation and you said, OK, I'm going to pay a couple of people in, in Pakistan because I pay all my people in Pakistan to make my videos. A lot of people are like, well, that's wrong. Well, they're happy because I paid their whole electric bill. So they're happy. I'm not wrong. OK, they're happy. They told me that's how much they wanted. So they make the video. They send it back to you three days later. You post that thing and you wait. And then you start again on the next video. And every three days you put a video out. And it's like clockwork, man. And you don't do the work. The only work you do is you find out what viral video you want to do next. I want like everybody right now to hit that subscribe button on Felonpreneur. She is giving you a million dollars worth of game. We you can at you. least give her that sub. And, and sub to this channel too while you're at it. You know? Sure. Yeah. Hit that button. MJ, can we take it back? What was it like when you found out you were going to prison? What happened that day? And what was your first day in prison like? Initially, I already knew that I was going to end up with prison. I went open trial by judge. Okay. So I was up for 25 years at first. Obviously, like, I'm not taking 25 years at 19 years old. I went back two months later and they offered me 18. And I was like, I'm not taking 18 years, y'all. Like, did I have quite a few charges? Yeah, but the whole problem here is, like, nobody confronted the fact that my boyfriend had died. Nobody was there for me. And so I, I turned into a menace. But the, uh, the problem wasn't drugs or any of that. The problem was a lack of love in my, in my home life. When I went trial by drudge, I was terrified because they can give me 5 to 99. And my judge was a bitch, okay? And so I I was very scared to do it, but I felt something in my heart telling me to do it. It, it was God. Now, through my relationship and stuff, I understand that it, God was leading me to do that. That day, I told my, my lawyer already knew we were going to do it. And he already told me, he's like, I don't think we should do this. Like, I really think we should just take a number because she can give you a lot. And I told him, like, no, I think I'm supposed to do this. I need to tell her what happened for my part. And he was like, okay. So... We went into the into the courtroom, and my judge was not there. My judge had a car wreck that day. So I had a fill-in judge. My fill-in judge gave me a five. 
a three, a three, and a like six month state jail felony. At the time, I really never even just taken a step back to to think about that part because you know I'm so young that I didn't think like, oh, thank you God. It was more just like, yeah that's what I thought, you know? And, but looking back now, I'm like, you're so dumb, bro. Like (laughs) God was letting you know that he was going to make a way for you because your life, this isn't where it ends. Like your life has something on it to where you need to speak for others. The, The problem there was like, I was just a young kid, man. And I was just mad and so angry. And so like, when I went back to my cell, one of my bunkies, she got 20 that day and I got five. So I really didn't have time to feel sorry for myself. Because she had a two-year-old son, and I can't look at my sentence and say, oh, poor me, when I know she's not going to be home till he's 22 years old. And so, like, my first day, my first thought, I I wasn't, I was just like, all right, like, shit, I'm going to go home 15 years before her, no matter what, you know? And so that was my first thought, first reaction. I think I waited six to eight weeks to pull chain, and when I pulled chain, I was ready. I was ready. I had been in county almost a year. I hadn't seen outside in over a year. I hadn't touched the grass or smelled fresh air, like literally in a whole year. And because of my charge, because I'm an aggravated robbery charge, like my big charge, I have an aggravated robbery charge. And then I have all my wrecks and everything. And so because of that charge, they didn't house us in the normal like dorms. They took us to the jail that they literally, I don't know if you know who Bonnie and Clyde is, but they're like pretty big outlaws. They were in this jail here in Texas and it's literally, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like old school, old school jail. Like there's no walls. It's just like bar, 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 bar. And like they had us down there for over a year and it's underground. We were underground like county. Okay. Then I went and did another five years in the penitentiary and three of those years I was segged up 24 hours a day. You know why? I couldn't stop telling the COs and the officers to fuck you. You're a bitch. Have either of y'all been to prison? Not prison, just jail. So one thing I can say about prison, and maybe you notice this in jail, is the smartest in the whole wide world are in there. They just made one mistake. How do you make a power bar to plug in bullshit, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Bro, the amount of shit, like, men are a lot more advanced because the trades that they were already in electrical stuff like that so they can take apart shit and put it together as tattoo guns as all this cool shit whereas women like we're able to to do a lot of stuff but like we can make our hot pot go a lot hotter and but not to the extent of men for sure but uh one thing i can say is like the smartest people in the world are there man people just don't realize it everybody thinks everybody in there's just dumbasses and that no, the thing is, is most of them were highly intelligent, so intelligent that they used it for negative stuff like me. My mom, yeah. one thing I stick with, my mom told me is, Mariah, if you will just use all your energy to do something right, you will go so far in life. But you're so busy using a quarter of it to do bad shit. That's what she used to tell me. And, and it's true because now I'm using yeah. all my energy to do right. And in a few weeks, I see like, this huge shift. Imagine like six months, a year, like if I really just do what I'm supposed to and push and stick with it. And the thing is, is like none of this is for me. I, at first I was building my social medias for me to be proud of my followers for me. No, like each of those followers, it's to help them. It's to show them something that they didn't see. And so that they understand that like the way that they were taught, they didn't teach us right. Schools don't teach us to count money, but but the only thing you need in life is to count money. So why are they not teaching us that? It's a rat race. If they teach all the rats how to make money, then who's going to be the ones having the money? The rats. The way the school systems are set up, like they make you pay for the kids to go to school, but the shit they teach them is trash. I'm going to homeschool my daughter as soon as she turns five. Like, no, I'm not. I don't care if people are gay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go here. I don't yeah. care if you're gay, but I don't want a man in a dress to teach my kid, okay? And I don't want yes. to ask him, why does he have a dress? And I don't want the next question, can I wear boys' clothes since he wears girls' clothes? No, you cannot, because girls don't wear boys' clothes. And that's my issue there. I shouldn't know who you fuck. That's the issue. Why am I being told that you're rainbow and that you do this and that? Why? 
You don't see straight people out there holding up signs saying, I'm straight because yeah. nobody cares. Like <laughs> it shouldn't be talked about at all, you know? But since it's talked about, I feel like it's my due diligence to speak up for what's right. I'm not against gays. I don't care. I just, that's the problem. I don't want to care. I don't want to have to care. And I don't want my daughter to have to ask me questions about it, you know? Yeah. And it's just pushed down everybody's throat now. It's like an agenda. If you comply, you're weak. If you don't comply, you're a terrorist in your own country. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Or a right wing. Yeah. Not. I already felt like that being a felon. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of the stuff with the uh, in the schools, it, there's a lot spilling over into Canada as well. And uh, oh, yeah. a lot of outrage. There's even uh, there's groups of of uh, of gays, LGBTQ. There's groups that are that are fully against the way that this is all being portrayed mm -hmm. and pushed, and you know, like it's hurting their cause. Like they've, you know, yeah. I've I've seen it also. Uh, many of them are speaking out. Saying, Jeffrey Starr, one of the biggest, I guess it would be trans. He even speaks out. He's like, "How are you a she they?" That don't even make sense. And this is a trans person stating, how is that possible? You know? Yeah, man. The world that we, that I came home to four years ago. Now, look, Biden has been over here doing some crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> These last four years, falling asleep, falling off planes, you know, doing some craziness. Falling and everywhere. And all are sitting here trying to figure out why the country's going to shit. But our president seems to be sleeping. In the last four years, the whole United States has went to crazy like and like i'm i don't know how like inflation and stuff i'm sure y'all are y'all are seeing it also but yeah literally like oh, it's my insane mom, up here they're taxing like, our taxes it's... oh god <laughs> that's that's why i own a business that's why y'all see me always like oh, fucking working they're gonna take your money you take all of your money if you go onto youtube you make yourself a youtube automation channel right and you put your llc on there are, are y'all LLC'd with the Broken Home podcast? No. We haven't no, set up. We just haven't gone through the final step yet. That That's the barrier that we hit. Oh, let's say y'all did do the final step. Y'all are LLC certified. Boom, have your LLC on your automation channel. And then what happens? You don't get paid as a human. You get paid as a business. Yeah. You get all that money. They don't take nothing out. And then, like, if you pay people to come on, if you buy gas, if you buy a phone, if you have a car, all of those can be used. Your internet you're using right now, that room you're using, all that can Light be written off. off before they take anything. Whereas right now they're taking everything first and what's left, well, that's yours. No. Yep. No, they're yep. not first. We, we need to be first. We need to manage our own money like that. And that's why y'all see me preaching a lot about don't, you know, work for somebody until you don't have to. But the whole time, make sure that you're trying to build some skills in the background to really be able to do that because nobody wants to work for somebody. Nobody wants to go in on Monday and they say, hey, I don't have enough money to pay you anymore. No, that's never going to happen on YouTube because as the depression hits, you know what's going to happen? Broke people, they're going to get broker. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to go watch my videos and I'm going to make money. Horror stories where you, you take somebody's whole video, put your little face there and do the reactment. Then that's mm -hmm. your video. You can monetize it. No, that's so true. That's so true. Real, Again, so everybody subscribe to her channel. She's <laughs> giving you that million dollars worth of game right now. Sniper Wolf, she's one of the biggest ones on YouTube, right under Mr. Beast. Clears in almost 1.2 million a month. You know what she does? Reaction videos. Just like this right here, where I will be reacting. That's it. Y'all should go Crazy. look her up. Sniper Wolf. It's amazing. It's absolutely insane that somebody's pulling in a million dollars a month, taking somebody else's content and putting their little ha ha over it. So I'm just trying to get a piece of that pie and I'm trying to tell y'all about it too. I love it. Yeah. Y'all got to look into it. If you don't want me to show you, awesome. Just look into it. Go look into it because any felon, like as I get going, that's what I'm going to preach to the felons is like, Go do YouTube automation. If you have the desire, if you already understand how to buy and sell, all right, now let's take that buying and selling. Now we buy videos from Pakistan. That's your connect. And we're posting them on YouTube. That's your pawn right there. Boom. It's a whole hustling game. And whenever that pawn sells, that video blows, you take your money from your pawn and you go back to your connect in Pakistan and you buy some more. Literally. You hit the Pakistani plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like, 
And it's so crazy when you sit back and, and you're like, yo, I work my ass off in the heat every single day for four and a half years. I built the company all the way up and then I watched it fall. And I realized I've been entrepreneuring wrong. I wasn't a business owner. I was a job owner. I still owned my job. My job was to run my company. I didn't run a business. A business owner is someone who can step away from their company for six months and it thrives. My company couldn't have thrived for one day. It couldn't even have opened. So that's where at four years later, I step back and say, I didn't build a company. I built, I built a self-employed company. And so this time as I go up, I'm building this company, this felonpreneur. Felonpreneur is more about how to teach felons life skills and how to integrate into being an entrepreneur. But my whole thing there is to show people, look, just because you have this background, just because you're this, 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 it doesn't mean shit. Just because you're in this country or this country, YouTube automation is global. You can be in the third world country and have a YouTube automation channel and it can have American voiceovers over it and it only shows in America and you're going to make American money. And then obviously English is spoken where? In America. So the video is going to be pushed in America. America has the biggest like uh, click through rates. Yeah. And so like no, no excuse there, you know, like, if you want to do something and you want to step outside, you're going to have to learn no matter what. But if you're up to learn and you can step outside of that, the money is astronomical. And for me, like the only reason I want to make the money like that is because I really want to spend my time going into juveniles. I want to spend my time going into prisons. They ain't going to pay me. We all know that. No juvenile is going to pay me to go talk to them kids. I'm doing that out of my own heart. No prison Maybe private owned prisons, but none, pr most prisons are not going to pay you to go speak. That's going to be out of my own heart. So I need to have money in the back end to be able to, one, pay for my own life. And two, if I find a kid or two that I really want to help and touch their lives, how can I do it with no money? I can't. I can't even get out there with no money. So I had to find something where I can make a lot of money literally while I sleep because those videos are going to be going. And then I can use my time to really do what I love. And like, I want to work with kids who are 16 and 17 years old, just like me, who've probably been kicked out, who are probably on drugs, who probably hit the walls, who probably hit their parents. I don't know. But I want to talk to those kids because I have a heart just like them and I can get through to them because I was angry. I was that young adult. That was me. I went to prison. You know, like they, they don't want to go to prison. I promise. And so I feel like if you have somebody who already went down that road, They'll listen. They don't they don't want to hear the mother white person who's, you know, you really should do better. They want to hear the bitch who went through the shit, who fought her way out. Y'all, I had my jaw broken in prison. Like, I got my ass jumped. Y'all don't even know, like, the amount of stuff that I did and everything. Like, it, it was so insane. But every single step, you you think you're bigger and you get knocked out. And you think you're bigger and you get knocked out. And every time, that's what happens. And so the thing is, is like, no matter how big you think you are, there's always someone out there bigger. They always go knock your ass down. And so if you walk around this, this world with that humbleness, you don't have to worry about getting knocked down because you're already humble. And so I had to learn that my first few years back out, I had to relearn my humbleness. Has it been difficult maintaining humbleness? Once my company fell, I, I, I was like slapped in the face with it, you know, like beat the shit out of pretty much with it because I went from running like five figures to four figures but you know 50k to 5k is like a huge jump especially when just to run my shop it was like eight grand a month i was shitting out 14k a month in employees i can't pay them i fired five employees in one day i, I, I didn't i couldn't do anything like in two months i had 40 grand saved up but in those two months where no money was coming in i was supplying it and i literally blew through my savings paying my employees because I didn't want to fire them. It, the business owner is not like, oh, I'm never going to sell another car. It's like the business owner says tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow's going to be better. Well, 60 days later, it wasn't better. You know, I had blown through all my savings and I, I didn't have shit. And I told him, like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't, I can't employ y'all anymore, you know? And like, that's where humbleness really just started to slap me in the face. And like, I've always been that person when I drive past like homeless people, I always give them like money, dollars. I always do that whenever everything like went down I started like really paying attention to people and uh there's this lady her name is Mary Lou 
And the craziest thing is, I think the reason my YouTube channel blew up is because of this. So I had this feeling I was supposed to help this lady, right? So I went over there, I talked to her. Well, she's been homeless eight years. She's a felon. She came home from prison. When she came home, she's she's literally like 65 years old. Like she, she came home at 55. She's older. She has three fingers on one hand, can barely walk. This is an elderly lady who cannot work. And she's homeless, been homeless since she came home from prison. And I just thought like, damn, bro. And so at the time I wasn't doing good and I only had two cars and I kept feeling like God was telling me to give her one of these cars. And I was like, I can't, I can't give her a car. If I give her a car, I'm not going to have any money. Well, I gave her the car, y'all. Long story short, I ended up giving her the car. I think I gave her the car in August. It was right in between. It was after my worst, after my biggest month. But into my first month when I knew like shit wasn't selling for some reason, all my cars, nothing was selling. So I gave her this car. It was a 2012 Ford Fusion. And I gave it to her, you know, whatever, all this stuff. Everything's good. I just went and looked at the car like 10 minutes ago. She still got it. Mm -hmm. and, like right before I got on the call with y'all, because she called me and she was like, I've lost the keys. I need some keys. I feel like like sometimes God will test you when you don't have nothing to see how much you're going to listen, you know? And like stuff, actually, at first I was like, I'm not going to give her that car. Well, a couple, I can't remember exactly, but a couple more bad things went happen that next day or two. And it, they happened to a point where I was like, you know what? I think I have to give her this car because bad stuff's going to keep happening. And I gave her the car and like everything went a lot better from there. Um, like my company didn't blow back up or anything, but low key, God was trying to tell me that that that's not where I'm supposed to be at. You know, I needed the experience. I understand how to run a business, but I'm called to do other stuff. You know, I'm not supposed to be there forever. And so that company going out of business and stuff, it was all to lead me right to here. Because had that company not went out of business, I never would have taken the step to go online for sure. God set it up in a way that I had no other opportunity but to push online literally and whenever i started pushing it a few weeks ago it's like that saying where they say you take one step and he'll take a step well his step was like fourteen thousand people and mine just made a video you know mm -hmm. i'm real big on god now because i finally understand like there's just nobody else like he's gonna bring you to a point in your life when you finally realize like you, there ain't nobody to call on i didn't have nobody to call on and i started calling on him and stuff started moving and I actually kind of feel stupid. Like, what if I'd have done that four years ago? What yeah. if I had, when I, um, what if I'd have told my story on YouTube like he told me to? Guys, I'd probably be with 400k right now. I'd probably be with Wes yep. Watson. Don't know who Wes Watson is? No. Yeah, I don't. I do. Yeah. Okay, he's a huge felon guy. He went to prison and stuff. Yep. That's probably where I would be. But hopefully, you know, as we go, and and, and sometimes we don't realize that we set ourselves back. Yeah. We think like, oh, I'm going to do it my way. And yeah, well, your way just set you back a couple of years, you know, <laughs> yep. for real. Absolutely. In a different world, what did you want to be when you grew up? In a different world, I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. I wanted to work on planes. The reason that I wanted to work on planes was because I was told that engineers make more money than doctors. Mm -hmm. That's it. My whole life, I my, I lived in poverty, y'all. Like, like, real bad. We ate, like, beans and rice and bread and gravy a lot. You know, my mom worked 14, 16-hour shifts with four kids, trying to pl protect the city. I had a Vietnamese boss when I was 12 years old working in a kitchen. He told me, he always said my name twice, Mac Mac. He said yeah, he, <laughs> that I should be, <laughs> I should be an engineer when I, when I grow up. And I was, like, 12 years old working under the table. And I was thinking engineer. I was right away thinking train. I didn't even know what an engineer was at the time. I was thinking I was the guy <laughs> driving the train. I was like, okay, thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> 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 it's ridiculous. Before we wrap it up, we always ask our guests to give a positive message for any of these youth that are growing up that have a similar story to yours or they can relate to your story. What would you say for them right now? One of the first things I want to say is call on God. And I know that a lot of situations are like, well, that's not going to do anything. It will. Don't ever underestimate the hands and the feet of your creator. Really. And the other thing I want to say is like, if you're watching these podcasts, reach out, reach out to Broken Home, reach out to me. 
I'm not going to tell you I can get there, but I promise you I'm going to put some shit in action to where we're going to try to figure out a way to get you the resources that you need, especially if you're under 18, because that's what I went through. You know, that's what so many of us went through. So speak up. Don't be afraid to reach out. Shoot a DM on Instagram. We will come. We will figure it out. And we will reach out to our following and find somebody in that state. I promise y'all we will. So that's that's what I want to say. Don't be scared to reach out. Thank you so much, MJ. Where can the people find you and what are you doing right now? The people can all find me on Felonpreneur, guys. Y'all can look that up on any platform and even on Threads, too. We have just added ourselves on there. What I'm doing right now currently is I am working on building my bank in the background so that I can utilize my time to really go into the prisons and go into the juvenile facilities and long term put together a program for adolescents and juveniles to where they can enter straight into entrepreneurship and the program will teach them YouTube automation to not only help themselves out of their, their, their lives and their poverty level, but maybe their little brother and sisters too so that they don't have to grow up with the life that, that they're in. That's what I want to do. And I want to do it all for free. I, I have figured that out since I talked with you last time. I've decided that I'm going to make a YouTube channel only for YouTube automation. And it's going to answer every single question. It's going to have part one. It's going to have the whole school and then every single question. Because so many people are so trying to capitalize. They're already making bank on YouTube automation. Just like I'm starting to. We don't need more money. We need to help other people. And so that I'm, I'm going to put out a free course on YouTube. I'm going to do it on the Felonpreneur channel so that people with criminal records can go find it. It'll be a lot easier. So that's what I'm doing, guys. I'm working on that in the background. And in the next week, I have my brand dropping. Um, my brand is going to be called My Turn. It has an awesome statement behind it. Black and white branding to diminish the separation amongst us, which is black and white. We have a huge race problem. And so I'll only sell black and white clothing. It's called My Turn, based off of Mariah Thrash, my name. And all of our clothes, everything will be about motivation, pretty much claiming it's your turn in life. And if it's not your turn, that's cool. But if it is, then you're taking that accountability and you're saying, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to be doing all the stupid shit I used to. I'm going to get my health in order. I'm going to get my life in order. It's my turn. And that's on all fronts. So if you buy the clothing, it's because you're saying it's going to be your turn and it's your turn now. Love it. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Mariah. Awesome. We'll put all the links to everything for you in the description of this episode. Mariah, thank you so much for coming on tonight and looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Thank you.